can't win out here. He's old, but he's still got it. Giant dust storms of stink dust. Pretty nice, right? Not bad. But the hookups here are straight whack. Good morning and hello there everybody. So we currently camped at the salt and sea area here. Really beautiful, we got our trailer set up, palm trees and the sea view in the background, we're taking in some sun. But today, we were actually first heading to Joshua Tree National Park. We're gonna go check out some BLM land and see if there would have been a good option for some free camping there. We're gonna explore the national park and then we'll come back here and we'll give you a tour around the salt and sea area a little bit at the end of the video here because we're staying here, it's only half an hour or so from Joshua Tree. We have full hookups. I mean like palm trees and a seaside view, pretty good. Box Canyon on Box Canyon Road, I guess. It was so cool, I wasn't, I don't know. I didn't know what to expect, honestly. I just heard the name Box Canyon Road. It sounded kind of cool, and it was actually way cooler than expected. But just after we got out of the canyon there, we arrived to Joshua Tree National Park. We're entering through the south side of Joshua Tree National Park by like the Cottonwood Campground. Man, this wind. Anyways. Entering at the south side of Joshua Tree National Park by the Cottonwood Campground. Oh my god, it's impossible. I can't win out here. And right outside of the park, I'm sorry, right outside of the park there is BLM land. There's quite a few people here and it's a weekday. I think I should go back in the truck. Like I was saying, we don't have any plans to do any BLM camping or boondocking in this trip just because when we crossed the border we wanted to have everything squared away. We didn't want any issues crossing the border this time. Yeah. And also, we didn't know what to expect with BLM land. Oh. And especially with a new trailer, we'd never camped in our trailer yet before. We didn't know what to expect with like our water and our power usage and just like camping in it in general. Also the clearance and road conditions. Just all this kind of stuff. We just didn't know anything about it yet and we wanted to play it safe just because we also have a baby. So that's also something to take into consideration. But from the looks of it, this place is very accessible. We would have definitely been able to get in here with our travel trailer, especially being that we have the Baja edition of our Jayco J flight. So it has a flipped axle, it has tons of clearance, it has some like beefy off-roading tires. There's definitely some like bumps and dips and stuff in this dirt road out here. So if you have like a more low clearance trailer, you might want to consider checking it out before bringing your trailer here. But yeah, we are just looking to check out more of the BLM land here in the US while we can, um, just with the truck, and then in our future trips that we go on, hopefully doing a bit more boondocking as well. We got our America the Beautiful annual parks pass, and we're ready to explore Joshua Tree. Okay, status update. We pulled into the Split Rock Day Use area, which is really far in. Heads up, this park is huge. We entered the south side, which was just near where we were, and it's like, okay, I was thinking at least. Cool, quick entryway there, and then we can continue up on and in. But it turns out a lot of it's by the north side, so we've kept on trucking. We've got a little lunch Alicia packed here. We're gonna try and enjoy now with these jumbo rocks all around me here. But I think we've been driving for like 50 minutes since the original check-in area, so. Be prepared for a lot of driving in here too. So we climbed up the rocks a little bit. The parking's down there. We're up here in this little private, I don't know. We were actually trying to run away from the wind because it's so gusty and the wind is really cool. So we got this little picnic area because I packed a little picnic lunch.
Daddy still got it. He's old, but he still got it. 30 is the new 20. Our day trip to Joshua Tree didn't quite go as expected. The babies are of course unpredictable and today Chloe was cranky. While driving further north into the park, Chloe got tired but for some reason wouldn't fall asleep in her car seat like she usually does. After what felt like forever of trying to make her happy, she finally did fall asleep. But our visit had turned more into a drive around the park rather than getting out to explore. We did love driving around the park and looking at all the Joshua trees, which are actually a member of the Agave family. A lot of the Joshua trees in this park were so tall. The tallest in the park is about 40 feet tall. Luke was also able to get out and visit the Choya Cactus Garden, his highlight of the trip while Chloe napped. This is a 10 acre area just filled with teddy bear Choya. Before our visit, we had never even heard of this insane looking cactus. They're also apparently insanely painful. Nicknamed the jumping choya because they'll easily break off at the joints and stick to you if you brush up on them. They are very, very painful to remove. They definitely give you a lot of warnings before you enter the garden. And here we are back at the beautiful Salton Sea site. It is straight line parking and someone's coming in at me here. But you got all the salt water views there. You got palm trees here. I don't know. Normally I'm not one for being camping this tight, but we're fortunate that it's not fully booked. If you did come fully booked, maybe it'd be a different experience. We did get in yesterday though, so we're gonna roll back to that footage real quick here and show us getting to the Salton Sea itself. So we just stopped in the town of Indio. We grabbed some groceries here at Walmart. It is like crazy windy out here. The rest area we stopped at for a wash and break was real windy. Indio is extremely busy. We've been driving past seeing all the dust storms in the eye. There's just dust everywhere. Trees are ripping around. And I'm hoping it's not gonna be this bad when we get to our campsite, hey? Oh my gosh, if it's this windy, like we might be stuck in the RV. We were just in the RV unpacking the groceries and everything. And it was like- Yeah, it's slamming around. Crazy. And then on top of that, the salt and sea also apparently might have a stink to it. So I'm worried it's gonna be stinky in general. And then I read that when the wind picks up, that also stirs up all of the dirt because of all the sediment and minerals and everything that's from the Salton Sea. And it gives giant dust storms of stink dust. So... Stink dust? Well, that's what I'm looking forward to the most. Yeah, hopefully we're not camping with stink dust, but stay tuned. <laughs> All right, and here we are, Salton Sea State Park Recreation Area. 30 bucks for full hookup, so you have a sandy spot at your site, water and electric, so we can run the AC on these hotter days. And it's not too windy, hey, look at that. Beautiful palm trees here. They're all just nice pull throughs. It'd be a little tight, but there's only two other people here on that side and the host over there. So we've got a nice middle spot. We're gonna be here, check out Joshua Tree from here, cause it's a half an hour to drive to Joshua Tree. So if you don't wanna stay in that national park, which is A, small, doesn't fit many big rigs. B, doesn't let you put your slide out. So if you have a slide, you can't take advantage of it in like some of the sites. I'm sure some can, so don't think they all can't, but that isn't very convenient. And yeah, we're by the water here, so it should be pretty nice. And it's not stinky. Yeah, it's not stinky, <laughs> no stinky dust. That's a pro tip as well. Pretty nice, right? Not bad. Again, if you're here and it was busy, it wouldn't be as fun, but for a quick pass through and Joshua tree and everything else, nice. The Salton Sea is one of the largest landlocked seas in the world, and it was created by accident. In 1905, spring flooding broke the Colorado River canal gates, causing the entire river to flow into the lowest spot in the area, which at 227 feet below sea level was the Salton Basin. The water flowed for 18 months before repairs were made, and voila, the Salton Sea was created. The salinity of the sea is on the rise for a couple of reasons. Some being that there are no rivers taking any water in or out of the Salton Sea, there's farm runoff going into the sea, and evaporation. Right now, the Salton Sea is about 50% saltier than the ocean. That's crazy. Pretty much the only thing that can survive in this water now is the tilapia.
So I love this campsite here at the Salton Sea. Really nice views, palm trees, good walk around, but we realized that the hookups here are straight whack. Normally we've seen a lot of hookups on the road. We've been using a lot of hookups lately, but these ones just make no sense to us. So we're pulled into site four right now. You can see the four on the ground back there. And then pull through our tight little site here. It's nice, palm trees, sunny. Got a bit tight to the table here from the stairs, but you can see table number four here. That's like this power box is right here. Your water hose right there, sewer on the back end. And you're like, okay, like it's so close to my site. I'm gonna hook up to this, I guess. But then my wires are coming underneath the RV, which felt a little off. But after I walk this morning, it turns out I'm supposed to be these hookups over here. Ooh, it's bright. I'm supposed to be these hookups here, I think, in this site, which is three. So like campsite three is marked for this is their picnic table. So they could be sitting there using the picnic table. Maybe they're grilling some hot dogs or have a nice family dinner and then you roll in and you'd be like, okay, here's your grill here. Oh, hey neighbor. Yep, just gonna do my water right by your family real quick here. Hope the grill's really hot, nice. And you're like, oh, my black tank's full. Just gonna walk down from your grill over here quick. Got a real full black tank's due for a dump. Gonna rinse it out quick right around your family here. And same goes for us. If anyone checks into five beside us over here, like they're gonna pull in. It's gonna be like really close because they're really tight sides, but then they're gonna be hooking up there and their sewer's gonna be over there. And we're gonna be chilling here in our little site. <laughs> I really didn't even think twice about where we were hooking up because it just seems so intuitive. Like beside your picnic table, I don't want anyone else hooking up there. So I guess I'm going to, but it just was like so intuitive. Like that's where we're gonna hook up. Like no question about it. It seemed really weird that we were having to run all our cable and hose and stuff like through a campsite and our sewer hose definitely wouldn't reach where we thought our sewer was supposed to reach. So I just went and checked and everyone is doing it the way that we think that it's supposed to be done now, like on your driver's side where all the hookups are. So I guess we're gonna switch that. And then otherwise we're hooking up tomorrow morning. We're heading off to Arizona, a new state for us to explore. And we're gonna trade all these beautiful palm trees we just enjoyed for big old cactuses. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for bearing with us with a little bit of a Chloe and wind issues going on. But we're gonna keep the good times rolling. Take care until next time, friends.